I am a self-professed book nerd and geek. I love my books. Now, who's this video for? It's for everybody. I don't care if you like reading or not. <laughs> Okay, so here's the situation with books and reading. I want to talk about the difference between an active and a passive reading practice, okay? And I want to help make this effective for both the reader and the non-reader alike. So I'm going to throw a number of things out there that are hopefully going to help both. But what we're trying to do is based on, and I'm just going to use an example. Let's just say it's the greatest salesman in the world with the 10 scrolls that are in there that have totally changed my life. Um, over the last 30 years, or the four agreements, which those four agreements, I live by, I love those four agreements, okay? Those two have changed my life. They're both two of the smaller books I have, okay? But whether you're an amazing reader or reading just isn't your thing, what are some things that you can do to move from a passive reader to an active reader? And an active reader for me is someone that takes the books that they believe could not will, but could have a real impact on their life. It helps them to be a better human. It helps and it teaches them concepts and principles that will help them both personally and professionally. How do you take those concepts and make them actually fully integrated into who you are as a human and into your day-to-day -day practices, okay? So that anybody who read those and saw you would go, I'm not kidding, I swear I swear that's Breckheimer. He does exactly that. I've had people look at the 10 scrolls from the greatest salesman in the world and they'll go, when I read through the 10 scrolls, literally I feel like they're explaining who you are. <laughs> And I would agree with that. Those have been my core 10 principles since I was about 19 years old and I'm 50 this year, okay? They've been important to me for a long, long time. But here's the thing is, I didn't just read it. I actively read it and found techniques to make them actually practical in my day-to-day -day life. And they have been fully, fully, fully integrated into who I am as a human and how I handle every situation. So what are a couple of those suggestions? The first suggestion is, is give yourself a break and don't worry about what you get on the first time that you read through a book, okay? Now, I've got a lot of books here and stuff like that. I'm just holding the ones up that are in front of me, okay? So this is not a book review on one specific book. But the first thing is, is I'm going to use a book like this. This book will actually give you a formula to read it when you're reading it. It's going to tell you to read each one of the 10 scrolls three times per day for a week before moving on to the next one. I'm going to tell you right now, don't do what it tells you to do, okay? What I'm going to tell you, give yourself a break. Just read it from front to back. Why do I say that? Because here's what I'm looking for. I would, I find personal value in just knowing what the full context of the information is. So what I'm going to do, I'm not worried, and this is why it's so easy for me to read a book, is I'm not overly worried about how much I take in, how much I retain, how much I can apply. Because the first time through, I'm reading it to just get the general concepts. I'm reading it to see all of the concepts in context of the full. I'm just reading it for a review, basically. Okay. Now, after I read it, something like this, I'm going to say, you know what? That is something that I want to integrate those concepts into who I am as a human being and who I am on a day-to-day -day basis while I'm in front of my wife, in front of my kids, in front of my customers, in front of my team. Okay. So here's what I do then. I actually, on a book that means that much to me that I want to integrate it, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to invest. Now, to buy yourself a book is an investment, okay? So I don't care if the book was $3 or $15 or whatever it is. What I am going to do is if it's available, then I'm going to go buy the audio book. And what I do a lot of times is I will actually take the audio book, and there's multiple things that I do with the audiobook, and this is why the audiobook is so important to me. There are times when I'm, rather than me reading it, I'm going to have someone read it to me, and I'm actually going to go ahead then, and I'm going to take the time to actually mark up the book while they're reading. Okay? So that is one area. I actually read along with it and mark it up while the audiobook is going on, and I stop it when I need to stop it. And I write notes when I need to write notes. And I underline when I hear something that really intrigues me. And there's something different about hearing someone else's voice. The next thing, and this may sound a little weird to you, but we all have 
phones these days that we can record things with. Now, I know, based on the audiobook, how long each chapter is. Now, in this book, the shortest chapter is close to about six minutes, and the longest chapter is close to about eight and a half minutes. I know this on the average, there's six to six and a half minutes. That's not that long, okay? So I know this. The next thing I'm going to do for active reading, I may actually read those six, six and a half minutes and record it. Now, a lot of times I'm just going to do it on video because that's my easiest recorder on here, okay? And what I do is I will actually listen to myself reading the book rather than the audiobook reading it to me. There's something powerful about hearing your own voice say the words that mean so much to you in this book. Let me say that again. There's a difference between having reading it silently, a difference between having an audiobook reading it to you, and there's a whole nother level when it's your voice saying the words that you are telling yourself are so impactful for you that you want to read and reread and reread this. So that's one of the your activities for an active reader. You know how long the chapters are. Very few chapters are 15, 20 minutes long. Most of them in a lot of these books, they keep them between five and 10 minutes long. Record yourself on that chapter. Here's the next part of your active reading. Record it. Now, whether you record it and listen back to that, or whether you listen to the audio book, most chapters are between 10 minutes long, 5 to 10 to 15 on the longer ones. And here's what I would say. Let's say it's a 10 minute chapter. Every chapter that you're going to read, don't worry about getting through the book after you've gotten through it once. Don't worry about getting through the book until you've read every chapter three times in a row. Now, for me, I'm probably going to do that in a day. So I'm going to use the audio book and I'm going to listen to it while I'm getting ready in the morning. Then I'm going to listen to it right after kind of the afternoon, okay? I've worked my butt off, I've worked hard, maybe I'm gonna take a little break for lunch, and then maybe while I'm at lunch or my break before I go back to lunch, it's not like I'm taking an hour here, I'm taking 10 minutes, I'm gonna to listen to it again. And then one more time in the evening, probably right before I go to bed, okay? And what I'm doing during that entire time I have a small notebook that I'll carry with me and I will write down what I think are the key points. That's another version of active reading. Don't move on to the next chapter until you've read that chapter three times. Now, there are books that actually tell you to do that from front to back when you first get started on the book. I'm telling you don't, okay? I'm telling you, see the whole context. All the content in context first, just read through it to know that you want to reread it over and over and over again. Then when you go back to it, whether it's the audiobook, whether you record yourself, or whether you physically read the book, do it any chapter that you're on, read it three times per day. Next level of active reading. Now, none of these suggestions I'm making to you are things that I don't do. <laughs> okay, I'm hardcore about this stuff. Okay. Now, a lot of people who have read a book and they see that book, such as either one of these, I mean, any one of them in the stack, you can take a look at, but any one of these, people are like, seriously, I swear you literally live that exact thing. Think about the things that I'm saying and when I do them, how they actually manifest in your life. Now, I just want to repeat that again. When you read something and it's something that you believe is going to have value in your life or value to those that you serve in your life or interact with in your life, how do you take it from the page to manifest? How do you make it manifest in your life? Okay, so these are some of the things that I do. Next one is, whether it's the audiobook or whether I've recorded myself, either one of those, and yes, I've done both of them lots of times, okay? What I do is I know this. When I'm driving somewhere, and this is the action that I usually take, but I could do this at home as well, but it's usually while I'm driving. When I drive somewhere, there's very few places I will ever drive that I don't have a general idea of how long it's going to take me to get there. So if I know, as an example, it's a 15-minute drive, I will listen to the audiobook only half of the time. So I will listen up to about seven or eight minutes, and then I turn it off. I require that of myself. I turn it off and here's what I actually do. Okay. And there's a little alteration. Another way I do this that I'll say in a second, but 
stick with this example. For seven to eight minutes, I'm going to listen to what that chapter has to share with me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off and I have to verbally, not think, I have to speak while I'm driving to my imaginary, for me, it's my son, and I have to think about based on what they just shared with me. If I wanted to share that concept with someone that I care about, number one, who would it be? I want you to actually visualize someone sitting in the passenger seat next to you. Could be your spouse, could be a partner, could be your son, could be your daughter. For some reason, when I started doing this years ago, my son was interested in some of the philosophical and uh, in spiritual concepts that I have in my life and minds around mindset. And he wanted to hear about some of those. So sometimes we would talk about those. So it just became natural for me to then, when I'm getting something out of the book, turn it off and I would pretend that he's sitting there right now. And how would I share that concept that the book just shared with me to my son? Think about who that is and actually say it out loud. Now, I'm gonna go back to what I said earlier, which is this, is there's a power in hearing you, hearing your own words, your own voice speak the words that maybe the audiobook also spoke, but it's your own words. And remember, this is a feedback loop. It comes out of this hole and it goes in this hole. Whether you want it to or not, it just does. It recycles. You hear yourself say these words that you're telling yourself are impactful and you want them to have an impact on your life. Then let them come out of your own mouth. And how would you share those concepts with someone? So, I told you there's a little alteration that I do on this sometimes. If I know that I'm on a 15 minute drive, I'm telling myself the longest I'm allowed to listen is seven to eight minutes, and then the next seven to eight minutes when I get there is when I have to speak what I think I've received. But one change to that. The other thing that I allow myself to do is not go seven to eight minutes. What I do is I listen until a point comes up that just sets my soul on fire. So I listen and then they say something and go, that's something I want to convey. I will turn it off. I don't care if that's one minute in, if it's five minutes in, or if it's right at the end of that seven or eight minutes. Whenever I hear something that I want to be able to speak and I want to make sure that I'm internalizing so that it can manifest in who I am as a human being, it can manifest in my life, I'm going to turn the audio off and I'm gonna speak it right then and there. I'm not gonna to wait to the end of seven or eight minutes. I'm gonna talk on that point and I'm gonna talk on that point right now, okay? Now the goal is, is to talk on that point in five minutes or less, okay? Then I'm gonna turn the audio back on and that's if I just you know got there you know a minute in, two minutes in, three minutes in. Now if I go the full seven to eight minutes or halfway through the drive, then I can take the rest of that time on that drive and obviously convey what I want to convey verbally. Now, obviously, if this is a longer drive, I'm not going to, you know, say on a two hour drive, listen for an hour and then talk for an hour. <laughs> I don't even want to hear myself that much. This is all within reason and per chapter, never longer than a chapter. So if I'm on a longer drive, I will not do this practice longer than a chapter because most chapters are five, 10 or 15 minutes long. I'm not gonna do this on an hour long uh, listening and an hour long talking, it just doesn't work that way. So that's another way of doing active versus passive reading. So uh, I have pulled up on the screen right now. Uh, you can tell I'm probably looking at something. I'm just scrolling through um, my actual blog on this. And I'm going to recommend, we'll put the link in the description here so you know how to get through that. Um, but a couple things about this. You want to create, you want to create a habit and an atmosphere of repetition. If something is worth hearing, I'm not looking for inspiration. Have you ever read a book or you've gone to a class or you've gone to a meeting, you've gone to anything, you've gone to a sermon on Sunday and you walk away and you are inspired. You're crazy inspired. I'm not looking to be inspired. Why am I not looking to be inspired? There's nothing wrong with inspiration. There is, there, there are definitely benefits to inspiration, but generally speaking, inspiration is one level. I'm looking for impact. Okay. I'll accept some inspiration. Sometimes just a little bit of inspiration is good, okay? But I think a lot of people never move beyond getting inspired. What's the difference to me? 
Inspiration is fleeting. Impact makes me want to take action. Take enough action that I can manifest that in my life. So here's what I mean by this, creating uh, an atmosphere or a commitment to repetition. What I want to do is I want to find something and read through something that the book inspires me. Then what I'm going to do is say it inspires me. Now I want to take it to the next level and I want it to have real impact on my life. So I don't do that by chance. I do that by systematizing it and creating an atmosphere. So that atmosphere is, is I know that I don't want to read two hours in a day, okay? But if the average chapter in this book is six minutes and 30 seconds, and I times that times three, that's less than 20 minutes in a day. I almost feel a little pathetic by saying my goal is to read 20 minutes in a day. I know I can read more than 20 minutes in a day, but I'm more worried about the reading that I'm going to do has a real impact on me rather than I clocked the amount of minutes that I want. So the atmosphere that I'm creating is is that it's never about how much time I'm reading. Okay, It's about taking actions and building a system that takes something from the written page and actually I start to find ways to integrate it into my life. I have a better chance on doing that in a chapter if the habit and the atmosphere that I'm creating and the system I'm creating for my reading is going to be six or seven minutes in the morning, six or seven minutes in the afternoon, six or seven minutes before I go to bed. What it tells you in this book is going to be read it once in the morning, read it once in the afternoon. And you can read those in your head silently. What it tells you is the last one. Read it before you go to bed, but read it out loud. He's created a system within this book, and I do that with all of these books. So the next thing is, is a journal. So then what I do, I am going to, that's my next active reading activity, is then I'm going to take each one of those chapters. Let's say there's 12 chapters in a book. Now some of them, they've got 30, 40 chapters, but let's just say it's 12 chapters. If it's 12 chapters in a book, then what I will do is when I'm going to read each chapter three times before moving on to the next one, my goal is is to walk away with my version of an outline of that chapter, and I'm going to share it with someone. Okay, I'm going to share it with someone. So I'm writing it as if I want to share it with my son. Now, it may just be your journal. I'm going to be hardcore honest. You may never share it with anyone. I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think if you put together a book club and everybody would read the chapter three times a day and everybody could get a copy of everybody's notes for each chapter, you're now creating an atmosphere and a system and a process to bring it from the page to internalizing it at a level that you never would have just reading it passively. So there's a lot of other things in that blog, different suggestions, different activities that I'm going to recommend that you go back to that blog. I would say share that blog with your team. Um, Post it up on your own Facebook page so it reminds you. I'm not looking like so I can get more views on it or anything else like that. I could care less. Just throw it on your phone, okay? The fact is, is If you do not already have a system and a process to take yourself from being a passive reader to an active reader, lean on someone else's examples, experience, and systems in doing it. It means a lot to me that someone would read a certain book and go, Breckheimer, is there any chance you've read this book? Because I swear I just was reading about who you are. (laughs) And I do hear those things. And a lot of times like, yep, sitting on my desk right now. I love it. And I'm going to use these examples. Most of these books that I have in this stack are read once per quarter. Once per quarter. Now, some people will say that's a lot. I usually read 50 to 60 books per year. Um, At least 12 of those um, are usually the same 12 every single year. And those 12 are usually read every single quarter. I'm usually only adding 10, 15 max in a year, maybe, uh, I guess some years, 20, 30 books that I will add that are new to me. But usually it's lower than that. It's usually going to be somewhere between 10 and 15 books is what I add per year, max 20 on the on a regular year. Um, most of my reading are things that over time I have found bring real value to my life. And I'm more worried about getting more out of the books that I appreciate than just adding new, whatever the flavor of the month is, book. Um, 
it takes a lot for me to integrate a new book and do this level of commitment to them. But once it really connects with me, understand that it's probably going to be in my rotation and it's going to be reread every quarter. There's a couple books I don't do every quarter. It's twice a year. Okay, But I hope this was helpful to someone. It's just maybe a new way at looking at reading that you have not taken into consideration. Go from passive to active. Find a way on the books that have real impact on you. Make sure they have impact on you and that you find ways to what the concepts that are in that book anyways, how to manifest those into your life and change who you are as a human being. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you.